Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Well, my week ban from YouTube is expired, so this is going to be part two of the kingdom of God. Not sure if there'll be a part three, but this is part two. Get your King James Bible, turn to Mark chapter 14. Christ is uh, getting ready to be crucified. And uh, so let's read Mark chapter 14. After two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. Uh, you ever heard somebody's um, crafty? Well, you get the idea. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster boss, box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. In other words, this is good-smelling, expensive stuff. And she break the box and poured it on his head. And there was some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. Now, when you read one of the other... Um, well, let's take a look. The book of John has a interesting thing here. It ties directly into what this was what what, we, what I just read. John chapter 12 verse 4. Then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. And he says, now check this out what he says. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bare what was put therein. Ah, Judas was the treasurer and he was a thief. So, uh, yeah, he was the money bags. Then said Jesus, Let her alone, against the day of my bearing hath she kept this. And there you go. All right, let's go to back to Mark 14, verse 6. And Jesus said, Let her alone, why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always. And whensoever ye may, uh, ye will, ye may do them good. But me, ye have not always. She hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the bearing. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Ha, huh, a memorial. She's going to be famous. Verse 10, And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priests to betray him unto them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought how he might conveniently betray him. And the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, Where wilt thou go, uh, where, where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? And he sent forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go ye into the city, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. 
follow him. And wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house, the master saith, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared. There make ready for us. You know, there, this uh, whoever supplied the room and the Passover meal must have been a servant of the Lord. And let's face it, there was probably an angel that came down and talked to whoever owns the house and uh, said, oh, hey, I'd like you to do something for uh, Jesus. And uh, because, you know, everything's all set up, but we don't have the other side of that story yet. When the kingdom comes, well, we'll find out how this came to be. And who owned this house, you know? Obviously, it was uh, somebody that served the Lord. So. so there was a large upper room furnished and prepared. There make ready for us. And his disciples went forth and came into the city and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And in the evening he cometh with the twelve. And as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, One of you which eateth with me shall betray me. And they began to be sorrowful and say unto him one by one, Is it I? And another said, Is it I? And he answered and said unto them, It is one of the twelve that dippeth with me in the dish. The Son of Man indeed goeth, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good were it for that man if he had never been born. Yeah, better never to be born than to suffer the flames of hell. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and break it and gave to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Remember when Jesus told them that he was the bread of life? Let's take a look. All right, let's go to John chapter 6, which really explains this. You know, the Bible's like a, a, a woven, all the doctrines are woven into the Bible, just like a finely made piece of clothing, I guess you could say. All right, let's start John 6, verse 30. They said, Therefore unto him, unto Jesus, What sign showest thou then that we, that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Now, here's an important point. For the bread of God is he, he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world the world. Christ is speaking of himself. He says he came down from heaven. Okay? He came down from heaven to the earth. Now, how, ask yourself, how is that possible? How did Christ come down from heaven and come to the earth? Ask yourself that question. The uh, Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you that Jesus is an angel. Yeah, that's, they, they teach he's Michael, the uh, archangel. All right. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life, giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore, give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. Huh, which means Jesus came down from heaven. 
He says, For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then he says, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you, that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven. Ah, Jesus even says, For I came down from heaven. Now, if Christ was a mere man, how did he come down from heaven? Explain that to me, because I don't understand that. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again on the last day. And people, the pre-trib rapture is not the last day day. There is no pre-trib rapture if Jesus is not lying here. The, you know, they, they keep telling you the pre-trib ha rapture happens before the tribulation, but the tribulation is not the last day. The last day is at the end of the tribulation. So how can they be raised up at the last day if they're raised up before the last day. It doesn't make sense. Verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Ah, but if you're... I, now, I went to Baptist Bible College, but if you're a, a bap, pre trib dispensational a uh, Zionistic Baptist, well, then I guess the pre-trib rapture is the last day. So, the Jews then, ah, the Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I come down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. See, people, this, this tells you election. Right there, election. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father, cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God. He hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. Their bodies anyways, right? This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven if any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh. Wow. His flesh? What? If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among them, saying, so, I'm sorry. And the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, 
and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. What? So we got to become uh, cannibals and vampires? What? That's what, uh, that's what some people are saying. I don't say that, but uh, some people say that. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue, as he taught in Capernaum. Many, now listen carefully, many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? In other words, boy, this is, <laughs> this is some deep stuff. This is hard to understand. That, that's basically, you know, in a nutshell. That's the Bob translation. Verse 61, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What an if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before. Now, remember in, uh, I think it's first chapter of Acts, uh, Jesus went up into heaven in the clouds, and the angels uh, said unto the disciples, you know, what are you guys doing staring up to heaven? I mean, Jesus is going to come back in, in like manner, you know. So, Jesus was in heaven before he came to earth. Now, if he's just a mere human, please, somebody explain to me. And from the scriptures, I'm not interested in your opinions. From the scriptures, I'd like you to explain how that works. Because I'm, you know, I'm just some dumb guy dumb guy that's read the Bible a couple of times, you know, so um, I'd be very interested in hearing from the scriptures how Christ was in heaven before he was born in the flesh. I'd, I'd be very interested. All right, so when Jesus knew in himself that his, that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, doth this offend you? What an if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend, which means ascend up, where he was before. It is a spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me you can I'm sorry. Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. Now check this out. This is John chapter six. Now we're going to read verse sixty six. So you're talking John six. 6, 6. Interesting, huh? So let's read John 6, 6, 6. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Ha, ha, ha. 6, 6, 6. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. All right, let's go back to Mark. Um, 
Oh, let's see. Mark 14. All right. So they're they're getting ready to have Passover. Christ is getting ready to be crucified. So Mark 14, verse 22. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and break it and gave to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body. Communion, people, right? And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Why many? Because it's not for all. I don't think so. I don't think the Canaanites have salvation offered to them. But what do I know? This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many, not all, many. Verse 25. Verily I say unto you, now this is Jesus speaking, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. So Jesus is not going to drink the fruit of the vine, I guess wine, until um, I'm guessing the marriage supper of the Lamb. That would be the logical choice of when he'll drink the fruit of the vine again in the kingdom of God. Of course, that's when Christ returns in glory to reclaim his throne. So, on the earth. On the earth, that is. So, all right. All right, let's take a look at Luke 7, verse 28. Jesus speaking, For I say unto you, among those that are born of women... There is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. So, didn't Jesus said the flesh profits nothing? Well, you could take that to the bank. Now, in Luke chapter 8, verse 10, now remember, Christ spoke to the multitudes in parables. He told them stories. Now, I've heard Sunday school teachers say that Christ told stories because, you know, the people were like farmers and stuff, and he spoke to them stories like planting crops and what have you so that they would understand. But <laughs> that's not true. That's not true at all. Christ, well, let's read what Jesus said. Luke chapter 8 and verse 10. Well, verse 9. And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said, Jesus speaking, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. You see, the Sunday school teacher lied. Jesus didn't speak in parables so that they would understand he did it so they wouldn't see and they wouldn't hear and they wouldn't understand. Well, they'd hear with their ears, but they wouldn't understand what he was saying. He said, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to them it is not given. In Matthew 13, 11, there's this parallel what we just read. He answered, Jesus, he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Sometimes 
the things of God are hidden from those that are not worthy. Do you know the Bible says that without righteousness? Well, let's read it. This would make a real good Bible study, righteousness. In Romans 10, 4, it says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. You know, there were uh, the Noahides, which some of them are uh, claimed to be messianic. Of course, I don't think we're talking the same Messiah here uh, called Christ, but, you know, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. You know, you can't be righteous by keeping the law. It's impossible. It says, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. In Matthew 5, 20, Jesus said, For I say unto you, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, um, they're talking about the tribe here. Except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. And then in Matthew 6.33, Jesus said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, not ours. Boy, my righteousness, my righteousness isn't even... Uh, as good as a filthy rag. Not even. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So, just remember, Jesus spoke parables to hide the kingdom of God from these people, some of them. And besides, he said that the Father draws people unto Christ that they might be saved. He did, it seems like, you know, that's what election's all about. Some people get saved and others, no. I mean, let's face it. People argue over election and whosoever will. I mean, do you really believe that God created Lucifer um, not knowing that one day in pride he would fall. Jesus picked Judas Iscariot, knowing full well that he would betray him because he came to earth to live as a sinless sacrifice to die for our sins. Didn't Jesus said, have I not chosen you 12 and one of you is a devil? The day Jesus picked Judas Iscariot, he knew in advance that Judas was greedy, he was a thief, and that he would betray him for money. He knew this from the day that he picked him, the first day. You know, God doesn't scratch his head and say, you know, that's a good point. I never thought of that. No, that never happens, people. Never. Never. God created Satan good, knowing uh, the, the Bible says that he was perfect in his ways and and full of beauty he he possibly could have been the most beautiful of all of god's creation possibly i mean the bible doesn't say that but you know he was lifted up in pride because of his beauty and um, i did a bible study on that uh, several of them actually all right luke 9 11 9 11 and the people, when they knew it, followed him, and he received them, and spake unto them of the kingdom of God, and healed them that had need of healing. Luke 9.60. Now, there was a guy that... You now, let's see. Hold on. All right, Luke 9, verse 59. But he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer, or allow, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Then Jesus said unto him, Let the dead 
bury their dead. In other words, let the spiritually dead bury the physically dead. Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at my house. Uh, uh, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. All right, let's go to Luke chapter 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two, by, uh, two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. So I wonder, you know, I always wondered, who are these 70? I mean, he had the 12, but he's got 70. And he's sending them by twos. Because the Bible says, in the mouth of two or three witness, witnesses shall everything be established. So there's 30, at, you know, like 35 pairs of people going out. Verse 2. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse nor scrip nor shoes and salute no man by the way. And into whatsoever house ye enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if the son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. Huh. I guess that's a blessing, a blessing for the house. You know? I mean, the Bible says, uh, if there come any unbelievers, don't bring them into your house. So, that's why I... It would never let uh, Mormon missionaries or Jehovah's Witnesses inside my house. I'll go outside and talk to them, and I'll ask them Bible questions that they can't answer. You know, I'm kind of one of their worst nightmares, but you know what? God blinds these people. He does. When you dishonor the Lord Jesus, uh, God blinds these people. He blinds them. And that's a dangerous thing. So, I mean, the Mormons teach that Jesus is the brother of Satan. Would you want Satan's brother as your savior? Uh, I think I'm going to pass on that one. And then the Jehovah's Witnesses don't even, well, they've, they've got a bunch of weird stuff that um, I don't even want to get into it. But, uh, yeah, I did a Bible class on the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, and I did not use the my bible college's instructions no i bought that i got a jehovah's witness bible that their mistranslation and i got their literature and i read from their own literature and compared it to king james and then used the uh, bible college's stuff to make sure that they weren't lying to me i mean let's face it if if you have an enemy and your enemies talking to other people about you, I mean, they can lie. But, I mean, you know, it's like Jesus said when he was confronted by the uh, the Pharisees. You know, they asked him, well, what about your doctrine? And he says, I was always in the temple with you teaching daily. You know, and he says, you guys know my doctrine. You know what I'm teaching. I didn't do it in secret. I did it openly. Well, that's the thing, you know. So, verse 5, and, it, and into whatsoever house ye enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if the Son of Peace be there, in other words, didn't Christ say that if, if uh, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them? Oh, yeah. And if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. And in the same hour, and I'm sorry, and in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborer is worthy of his hire. 
Go not from house to house. And into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. And heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, is come nigh unto you. But into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets of the same, and say, even the very dust of your city, which cleaveth on us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Wow. Wow. Woe unto, the, uh, woe unto thee, Chorazon, woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which had been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. Oh yeah, when, when you're sitting around and people are doing the mighty works of God, miracles which no man can do, and I'm sorry, I don't believe Kabbalah can do the miracles that Jesus did. And they're preaching repentance and the gospel of the kingdom of God, and you don't listen? Oof. What, is, what does they say? Verse 14, But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted to heaven, shalt be thrust down to hell. He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. Ooh. So if you hate Christ, you hate God the Father that sent Christ. Think about that. Teach that to your favorite Zio church. Oh, yeah. Verse 17, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said to them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So, you know, there's people that will read in Revelation uh, where it says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. And they'll say, see, Satan doesn't fall from heaven until um, the future. If you believe Revelation is future. Some people think it's all past. But um, here it is. Luke was written years before Revelation was. And Jesus said, this is a fact. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Sounds like it happened in the past. So, what can I tell you? Behold, I give unto you power to tread on uh, serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. In other words, they can uh, have snakes bite you and they wouldn't die. Uh, that happened to Paul, right? Verse 20. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Ah, the book of life. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed unto them Revealed them unto babes, even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. And he turned, unto, and he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. 
For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. All right, let's go to Luke chapter 12. Verse 22, I guess. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Now that's clothing. Consider the ravens. For they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. And how much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? A cubit's about a half a meter, a foot and a half. Uh, for those of you that don't know it, a cubit was approximately a man's tip of his index finger to his elbow. That was approximately um, a cubit. So, can you think and make yourself taller? No. Verse 26. If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And that word nations is the same word that's translated sometimes as Gentiles. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old. A treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your hearts be also. All right, let's read Luke chapter 13, and I guess we'll close this out and we'll do a part three, if I don't get another strike from the uh, tube. Luke 13, verse 1. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Now, that's kind of blasphemy, really. Um he took these people's blood and, you know, put it on their sacrifice. You know, the blood of humans. When it's supposed to be the bull of blood and goats. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you nay, but except ye repent ye shall all likewise perish. Notice that he's mentioning sinners in one sentence and then repent in the next. Verse 14. Or those eighteen upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. See, when they're talking about repent, 
talking about the sinful acts of people. There's others that will tell you that they're talking about repenting of your unbelief, but I don't believe that. Verse 6. Now remember, the fig tree was the symbol of Judah. Judah and Israel are not necessarily the same. Judah was one tribe of the twelve tribes of Israel. They were the tribes of the kings. Verse 6, he spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? Why three years? Jesus, his ministry was about three years. I be, now, I believe, I believe that's true. So he says, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree. Good fruit. There are works. And he says, and, he, and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? In other words, why should... All right, so if you got a tree, a fruit tree, on your farm, and it doesn't produce any fruit, you know, why is it going to take up space? Get rid of it. Put something in its place that's going to produce some fruit for you. You know, maybe your kids like cherries or apples. I, You know, I don't know. Why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. In other words, I'm going to, you know, fertilize it. And if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. Ah. Isn't that what happened in 70 AD? Uh, the Romans came and destroyed the temple in 70 AD. On the same exact day that the Babylonians came years, many years earlier and destroyed the temple. So the Babylonians and the Romans destroyed the temple on the same exact day. Ha, huh. that's a that was a message from God. And he was teaching in one of their synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. Oh yeah, the ruler of the synagogue's mad. Because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work. In them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite! Doth not each one of you on the Sabbath day loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And the answer is, yeah, they do. They water their cattle on the Sabbath day, which is work. And they care more about their cattle than they do women or their, their you know, the people. Verse 16. And Jesus speaking. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Then said he, Jesus, unto what is the kingdom of God like? What is the kingdom of God like, and whereunto shall I resemble it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man 
took and cast into his garden, and it grew and waxed a great tree, and the fowls of the air lodged in the branches of it. And again he said, Whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God? It is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying through, uh, journeying toward Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in, and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up, and hath shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without, and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not, whence ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God. And you yourselves thrust out. And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, there are last which shall be first. And there are first, which shall be last. The same day there came certain of the Pharisees, saying unto him, Get thee out and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. Ah, Pharisees are working with Herod. You know that wonderful family that killed all the children in Bethlehem to trying to kill Christ when he was a child? Yeah, that family. They were Edomites of Esau. God said he hated Esau. Read Malachi chapter 1. People say, oh, well, you know, uh, God loves the sinner. He doesn't love the sin, but he loves the sinner. Read Malachi 1. God said he hated Esau. And I'm sure Esau returned the favor first. For Herod will kill thee, and he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox. No, Jesus is not telling Herod, uh, telling them that Herod's an attractive female. No, no. You ever heard of this, the expression, the fox guarding the hen house? Oh, yeah. The sly fox. Oh, yeah. Foxes are, they're smart, and they're sneaky. That's what he's saying. He's not calling him an attractive woman, that's for sure. Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I will be perfected. Right, on the third day Christ raised from the dead, right? He was perfected. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. People, there are, well, let's see, hold on. In mystery, uh, speaking of mystery Babylon, spiritual Babylon, for example, uh, verse 18 and verse 24, it says, And in her was found the blood of prophets, the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Now, there's people who will tell you that America is Babylon, the mystery, the spiritual Babylon. But it says in her was found the blood of prophets. Okay, now let's go back to Luke 13. Verse, verse, Luke chapter 13, verse 33. Jesus says, Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish 
out of Jerusalem. Now, how can, if Jesus said that it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem, and Revelation 18 says that uh, the blood of prophets were slain by Babylon, you could read, you know, read, read, read uh, about Babylon in Revelation 18. You know, that tells you right there, America has never slain the prophets of God. Jerusalem did. So guess where Babylon mystery has to be? Spiritual Babylon. It has to be Jerusalem. Oh, Bob, that's, that's, but don't you know that, that Jerusalem's God's holy city and, and God's chosen people are there? Well, let's read what Jesus said in verse 34. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets. What? They kill the prophets? And stonest them that are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings? And ye would not. Christ tried to gather them together, but they wouldn't have it. Verse 35. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Ah, Jerusalem, behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And verily I say unto you, ye shall not see me until the time when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. God, remember when we were talking about the, uh, the fig tree? Yeah. God... Uh, in verse 6, it said, A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. The fig tree was a symbol of Judah. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it, and if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. Well, guess what happened in 70 AD? The Roman army came and destroyed the temple. And you can read in verse 24 of Matthew, Jesus said that not one stone would be left upon another upon the temple. So guess what? That wailing wall that the Jews uh, uh, do their little thing, that's not the temple. Otherwise, Christ is a liar. And you could take your pick. You could either believe the Antichrist or you could believe Jesus Christ. Personally, I believe Jesus, who is Christ, but you know. Um, I am going to try to start my own website. Um, I'm starting to do some agricultural type stuff. Uh, the name of the website is organicorchards.info, I-N-F-O, organicorchards.info. And uh, I'm just starting, so there's not much on there, um, you know. So if uh, YouTube gives me another strike or deletes the channel, uh, you'll find me. I'm there, Organic orchards you know like a apple orchard or something so or orange orchard grove i don't know all right well um i'm not giving up that easy but we'll see what happens all right all blessings praise glory and honor to the lamb of god slain before the foundation of the world in jesus precious name amen